Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome to Stand Up Moto. And this is my review of the fully electric BMW CE04. If you're a new viewer, welcome. If you're a return viewer, welcome back. And today we're going to have a pretty comprehensive look at this electric offering from BMW that comes in at around 22,000 Australian dollars. I'll put some other currencies up on the screen for your part of the world. And you know, if you're a regular to my channel, you would know that I am, well, pretty well a full on petrol head. But I have to say this bike really does put up a pretty compelling argument for efficient urban machines. And it has generated so much emotion with different people that I've spoken to. And you may be somewhat surprised at my conclusion at the end of this review. And no, I didn't turn the volume down. That is how much noise this machine doesn't make. I mean, this is stealth riding. Anyway, let's get into it. The motor itself, of course, is electric. It comes in at 42 horsepower or, uh, and 62 Newton meters of torque. Um, it's a lot of power and that's blatantly obvious. When you open the throttle on this from the lights, it just takes off like a rocket. It's no lightweight, however, it's 230 kilos. Single-sided swing arm with a belt drive. If you've had experience with belts, you will know they are basically maintenance-free. They're clean, no chains, and they last forever. Well, maybe not forever. Um, single shock just on the left-hand side, and it's just different to get through your head, the, the cosmetics. But you know, the longer I spend with this bike, the more I love it. From a comfort point of view, um, look, it's pretty good. It's an upright seating position. You can get feet flat on the ground. That's your normal riding position. Or if you want a more relaxed, put your foot up the front. But I found it more than comfortable. That, believe it or not, is the backrest option. Looks more like a bump in the seat, but um, this is the normal seat here. That little backrest I did find, however, was really handy. The amount of acceleration this has got. And I, I can't, really get through on video just how well this bike accelerates. Masses of torque and it's instantaneous. The battery itself is carried down low. In fact, you can feel the cooling fins along the bottom of the battery. And because that battery is so low, I mean, the majority of weight in these things is the battery. It's right down. And I think that's the reason it handles as well as it does. It's a nine kilowatt hour battery takes about four hours to charge, maybe four and a half at home, and roughly two, just shy of two hours on a fast charge. And this bike is fitted with the fast charge option. You don't have to have the fast charge, and it's not worth paying for that if you're charging at home and you've, you've got it overnight to do. But if you're on the road or you don't have the home charge available, where you can just plug it in at home, um, the fast charge option I think would be the go. But yeah, nice, simple, out of the road. The instrument panel that comes on the CE04 is terrific. I mean, you could make a half hour video on that, but I'll just do a quick summary. The dash itself, look, it's, it's probably one of the best dashes available on the market. It's a 10.25 inch, it's typical BMW. It's all operated with the whiz wheel on the left which I think is on all BMW bikes now. You have a menu down here and you push the button. You can scroll through and do whatever you want on this dash. It has Bluetooth. It has navigation that clips across to your telephone. Um, you can play music. It is probably one of the best dashes available on any motorcycle. It also has BMW's connected app so you can monitor the state of charge, etc., remotely from your phone. There's various screens here, and I won't take too long on this because really, as I said, it could be a half hour video, but you can see here, you can use this screen. You've got tire pressures, range, 90 kilometers, eco, trip meter. Um, this is the screen that I spent most of my time on. Some people opt for the split screen because they have nav going on one side across to your telephone, but you can see the power you use on the right and the regen braking you use on the left. 
For those of you that are new to the world of electric mobility, the word regen is basically regenerative and it's used, actually, if you break it into syllables, regenerative, I find it easier to say. I think it's a tricky word. My daughter, a teacher, is going to kill me when she sees that I broke a word into syllables on a motorcycle review. But basically what it means, and most reviewers will say regen braking, is the motor that's propelling you forward, when you roll the throttle off, then turns into a generator, slows the bike and puts power back into the battery. Now, if you look at that scale on the dashboard here, you can see the pale blue bar graph, this is the screen I use most of the time, is going up. I'm easing off the power, it's putting power back into the battery. When I get to the front of the pack here and I accelerate away, you can see it goes in the opposite direction and I'm now taking power out of the battery. And before I get in trouble, yes, we're allowed to filter between traffic at traffic lights here in Australia. Um, I used the brakes maybe half a dozen times or a handful of times. Actually, half a dozen and a handful doesn't go right. That'd mean I had six fingers, wouldn't it? But you know what I mean? Um, it is amazing. The more you roll the throttle off, the more braking that you get. And you really don't need to use the brakes at all unless it's emergency stopping. So I thought without altering my riding style whatsoever, I would do a little experiment. And it was actually quite amazing. Something almost magical. So where am I headed with this? Well, if unlike me, you were not asleep during lectures on the laws of thermodynamics back in college or uni or school or wherever you may have learnt these things, one of the things I do remember is that we can't get, one of the laws is that we can't get more energy out of something than we put into it. In fact, we can't even get out the same as what we put in. Well, that's what we were told anyway. So I thought I would conduct a little experiment with this BMW. And what I did is I picked flat ground. I made sure everything was flat. I got a 12 kilometer run across the city. Now that's about seven and a half miles. I started with 50 kilometers of range in the tank or in the battery, I suppose we call it, don't we, on this. And I headed off. Now this had a lot of stops and starts, mainly traffic lights. I used the same acceleration that I had been using all day, but I left my regen braking to the very last minute as I came up to lights. So as I got the maximum regen braking. And to my surprise, after I had done this, this 50, or oh, sorry, 12 kilometer range, my 50 kilometers that I had left in the tank had gone up to 55. I'd actually made three miles of range without altering my riding style, apart from the regen braking. It just goes against what we know. It's a miracle. As far as turning the bike on and off, it's a key fob like most modern motor cars nowadays. You can leave that in your pocket and you just have a push button here down underneath the, I was gonna say steering wheel, handlebars. Everything comes alive. That's also the steering lock. Um, really simple, easy to live with. No looking for keys. And while I think of it, something I didn't mention, when you use that regen, here I roll the throttle off, the brake lights come on. The CE04 has got under seat storage, but where normally you would see on scooters, and remember this is still a scooter, although it's as fast as a motorcycle, it's still a scooter. But you would generally lift the seat to access the under seat storage. In the case of this one, there's a little button here. You have to have your ignition turned on. Push that button, little gas strut, actuator, and there is your under seat storage. Um, not quite big enough to put a showy Neotech 2 because they have the vent on top. An open face helmet would be fine, but I would suggest if you were going to get one of these, BMW do a rack and a top box that goes on, it would give you a lot more storage. But I mean, that's more than adequate to put some gear, bit of shopping, whatever it may be. And there's a light in there too. That's always nice. BMW do their own top box and it's a pretty tricky little box actually. It expands from 25 to 35 litres, quite smart. They also do a, I guess you'll call it a little side pannier that hangs on the side of the bike.
For a bike that is so long, I mean, as in wheelbase, I was pleasantly surprised at just how well it does U-turns and its manoeuvrability. This is two standard car parks here, and you can do complete 360s without putting your foot down. Um, usually on a, a clutch or a geared bike, you're feathering the clutch and working the brakes. This does it easily. It manoeuvres really, really well and silent. There's, there's not a noise. It takes a while to get used to that in your head, but U-turns and that type of thing are fine. If you get caught in a really tight alley, such as this one, you can just turn it with the reverse button, hit the reverse, put the nose up to here, hit the reverse button, and it's dead quiet. You just basically press the button and roll the throttle on as you would normally do, turn and come straight out of it. So it's not an effort. Although it weighs 230 kilograms, you're not having, or just over 500 pounds, you're not having to worry about pushing and prodding with your feet. These turns here are done absolutely footless. So just move the body weight up, crank it into the turn, and it rolls around beautifully. Very, very maneuverable in tight urban scenarios. Up the front, alloy wheels, dual disc brake rotors, BMW calipers, and typical BMW, it stops on a dime. It's beautiful. Right way up forks, tucked away down under here. You don't see much of them on a scooter that's all fared in like this. LED lighting, and as you would imagine with BMW lighting, excellent lighting, excellent braking. It also has that follow me home feature. So when you get off of the bike, you've turned it off, you walk away, you get about 30 seconds to get to your door and put the key in, and then the bike shuts the lighting down. But yeah, very neat, very tidy, typical BMW. I know a lot of riders are not that fond of roundabouts. Uh, really on the CE04, it's a non-event. It is easy. You feel quite comfortable and secure going around roundabouts. But something that is interesting, when a bike is this quiet, and I mean, there's virtually no noise, I'll go down to this next roundabout here and there's a gardener working, doing some edging around the roundabout and you have a listen. So there he is there with his little edging machine. And of course you hear everything so clearly. When you're at traffic lights, you can hear people on their telephones using their Bluetooth. It's a totally different experience. So as far as phone storage, when you're going along, um, sorry, not that one, that one down there. Push the button, you can hear the little electric actuator and you've got a rubber seal around here. Your phone goes in there, it is spring loaded. So it's when you slide your phone in, mine's an iPhone 13 and it goes in there easily, even with the cover on. You've got a USB-C power outlet so you can have your phone charging at the same time. And as an added bonus, that little storage area, it's not just vented, they've put a fan in there as well to keep your phone cool. Great stuff. On this side, you open that little hatch there and there's just your standard Type 2 charger. As I said, the bike comes with its own cord that you can plug in at home, or if you're at a mobile charger or a car charger, plug it straight in there. Um, little rubber cap, you put that back on when you're done like so close the hatch and it's nice and neat the charge cord itself look it's a pretty hefty piece of kit i mean that is decent gauge wire as we mentioned before it's the standard type 2 plug all of this rolls up and it fits into the storage compartment we saw the little opening door before um, or you could mount it on a wall it's got mount screws there the plug that comes with it would of course be suited to your local power outlets at home i mean ideally you wouldn't travel around with this cord. The advantage of this, of course, being a Type 2, is that you can pull up at any car charge outlet uh, or EV charger and plug it in. As far as range and charging, BMW claims around 130 kilometres. That's 80 miles. And based on our earlier experiment, that may even be achievable. But if you wanted to work on the conservative side and say, 100 kilometres, that's a little over 60 miles, which would be more than the average daily commute for most people. I think that would be easily achievable. And of course, going into petrol stations, gas stations, 
whatever you want to call them, all starts to seem a little bit primitive when you're riding this bike, pulling $20, $30, $40 out of your pocket, taking off your gloves, taking off your helmet. Um, that all starts to seem a little bit horse and cart, doesn't it? It's a totally different way of life. And I came across a chap who owns one of these machines. He's had it for about 12 months now, and he has not visited a petrol station or a gas station in that time. The money and time that he has saved really does start to add up. Charging times, if you're charging at home and you're totally depleted in battery, that's about four and a half hours from your home socket. Because this has that type two plug, you can use a car EV charger. And if you've got the fast charge option on the bike, about an hour 10, hour 20 for a complete recharge. The controls, pretty standard BMW. On your left bar, you have your menu screen or menu button to scroll between your screens, your whiz wheel to navigate once you get to those screens. You have your indicators. I mean, this is pretty standard on all bikes now, isn't it? On the left bar, horn tucked away down underneath. Come back up to the top, you've got your hazard light switch, which I think they're on most bikes now too. The daytime running lights, headlight of course is hardwired, but you've got a daytime running light. You have that wonderful reverse button. We've seen just how good that is. And over the back, the standard pass light that is on pretty well all the bikes now. On the right hand side, the kill switch. I think that's a mandatory now on just about every bike. Your mode button to scroll between your road, rain, eco, etc., depending on the traction. And of course, your heated grips up there. The throttle operates exactly the same as any motorcycle, just twist and go. Top speed is 120 kilometers an hour or 75 mile an hour. Well, I think this one might have had a few extra volts or something. That is more than achievable um, and it gets there at a pretty rapid pace too. And an interesting feature, the side stand, which I mean, all bikes have got, but with this one, you can see I'm rolling there. If I put the side stand on, it's a park brake because you can't leave the bike in gear being an electric motor. Great idea. So if you're on a slight incline, decline or whatever, until such time as you put that stand up, the bike won't move. Putting it on the centre stand, there's a little section here you can put your hand underneath, but they have got the positioning of the stand perfect. Pop your foot on there, basically just push with your foot and guide it and it's up. This review actually came about through a couple of subscriber requests. So I reached out to Moto Adelaide, our BMW dealer here in South Australia. They were more than happy to supply the bike. They threw me the key fob and said, go for your life, don't break it. So thanks Moto Adelaide. Reverse is just a wonderful feature to have. And remembering it's a fairly heavy bike, 230 odd kilos, 500 pounds. It is great, hit that button turn the throttle, reverse out of pretty well any situation you're in, and then away you go. The tyres, as you would expect from BMW, Pirelli, Diablos, you may have seen them on some of my other bikes. Fantastic tyre. The rear tyre is a 160-60 R15. The front is a 120-70-15. Once again, the Pirelli Rosso's um, very good tyres, very sticky tyres. What do you think of the rear rim? It's all alloy. Now these graphics have been put on by the dealer, but so it would normally come as just a black rim. I mean, it's gotta be the easiest rim in the world to clean, doesn't it? Single sided swing arm, as we spoke about, one big nut in the center. I like it. It took a while to get used to it, but now I really like it. And we spoke about the weight, 230 kilograms, but you know, it's really, it's not too bad. And I think that comes down to the fact that the battery itself, which is a majority part of the weight, is carried low in the bike. Now, cosmetics, of course, are subjective. And when I first saw this bike, I sort of raised an eyebrow and went, well, that's different. But you know, the longer you spend with this bike, the more you want to look at it. It's just so unique. I'm not sure what's going on with this tiny little screen on the front here. 
All I can assume is it is to protect the instrument panel a bit. Um, I don't think it really does much. It's more of a cosmetic. However, it has four decent socket head caps here. So you would be able to put on accessory windshields to offer a little more protection. Um, but I think, yeah, I think that's just a bit of a cosmetic. Now, if you're looking at this and you're thinking, that's a long bike, you're thinking correctly. It's 1,675 millimetres long, and you would think that would deter from the handling. It doesn't, as we've seen, or we're going to see, doing U-turns and things, it is so easy. But what it does do, being so long, it gives you a beautiful, comfortable ride. So what is my summary and conclusion after spending, well, look, quite some time on this bike? I'll just sneak it back here in the showroom at Moto Adelaide. I'll put it back in exactly the same position that I picked it up and they may not even notice that it was gone. Look, if you can see past that initial purchase cost, and let's, let's be honest, it is not cheap, for in and around the city and the suburbs, filtering through traffic, it is basically perfect. On the freeway, it holds its own with no effort at all. I was sitting along at 60 mile an hour, 100 kilometres per hour. I still had some in reserve for overtaking. In and around town, that instant torque that you get from the electric motor, it really is quite amazing. And coming from, you know, fuel-powered machines, I just lapped it up. And I think as a full-on petrol head, I have to concede defeat. I mean, I suppose it's a natural progression the same way that we went from horse and cart to internal combustion. But there's no oil changes, there's no spark plugs, no air filters, no fuel filters, no lubing chains, worn clutches, and of course all the relevant costs that go along with that. Not to mention paying for your fuel for petrol or gas to put in the thing and stopping at service stations. It comes with a five-year warranty and based on my research, you should be able to get at least 10 to 15 years from the battery. I guess based on the facts, whether you like them or not, there's still the facts. If you live within a 100 kilometres or 60 odd mile return trip for your daily commute and you're looking for a machine that costs pretty well the price of a, a cup of coffee to run, a bike that is a a statement in itself. Do I need one for my style of riding? Well, no, not really. Do I want one? Yes. What BMW engineers have developed here is nothing short of brilliant. 